Brian, you've had a, a lot of game-winning drives in a relatively short amount of time since you've been here. Um, what what mentally goes goes into something like that? Uh, you know, require a little bit more patience, a, a little bit more staying calm than than you know. I don't know another drive during the game. Yeah, those are uh, something we prepare for. I think that's where it starts is, is in your preparation. We get a lot of reps at those during training camp, um, during the week, and then we, we talk about it a lot. So uh, something we know is very important. Uh, I think it's crucial just to uh, stay level in those situations. Obviously, it's a, you know intense, big moment of the game, right? It's make or break. So everyone feels that that pressure, but uh, I think it's important for me to, to remain steady and kind of transition or uh, exude that confidence over to the guys that, um, you know, we're going to go out and, and make this happen. You know, last week we started off with a, a minus 10 on, on a holding play to start the drive, and uh, there was no panic. Our guys stayed confident, um, total confidence that, that we were going to make a play and, and get it going, and we did exactly that. Did you have a, a game-winning drive where you never had to throw a pass before that you can recall? I guess the overtime one I'm thinking of. Um, no, I mean, got the, got the ball in great field position there, so uh, we were already – Right there on the, uh, the fringe of a field goal, field goal range. We knew if we picked up a few yards, then it was going to make that field goal easier. And obviously, um, you know, O-line and Derek did a good job there of creating some space and, and getting us in for a close field goal. Who uh, had a lot more success, I guess, on Sunday? You think that's kind of a, a culmination? Maybe were you building to that? Maybe with some of the work you had in practice? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I, I've said that you know from from day one. Is the more time we get together, the more uh, that relationship's going to grow. Obviously, you see him go up and make a play early on, like he did in the first drive of that game. You know, going up on a third down in tight coverage, uh, put a ball where really trusted him to to go get it, and he went and got it for a huge first down. So, you see him make that play, and it, it builds the confidence quickly. Best after something bad happens, the Arizona game, and then the bad first half, and you come out and, and look fantastic. Do you have any idea why that is, and do you think it's a dangerous characteristic at all? Yeah, I don't know, don't know why that is. I think offensively, we just didn't finish drives. You know, we were moving the ball down to the red zone um, and had, or were really close to a, a couple opportunities for touchdowns down there. So, um, you know, it wasn't our best ball, but I wouldn't say it was it was extremely bad or anything. You know, we just we just needed to finish. So we had that confidence that you know we're moving the ball. We just got to execute and finish drives. So. Um, no panic. We just believed in each other and, and knew that we would get it going and get in the end zone. Overall, do, do you need to be, I don't know, more, more ready when people believe, more ready when, when bad things haven't happened? Um, I don't think it was a matter of readiness. You know, I think we were ready. We came out ready. We moved the ball <clears throat> straight down the field, had, had big third down conversions. And, uh, and executed well <clears throat> up until when we got you know, down, down inside the red zone. So uh, I don't think it was a matter of readiness at all. I think uh, we just have to sustain that execution down into the red zone. Excuse me. Sort of along those same lines, Brabel just said that focus can't only be a response to adversity. Can it be a challenge when you're piling up wins, maybe and things are going well, to, to stay focused and keep that sense of urgency? I can if you let it, but... That's not our mentality around here. That's not our, our mindset. Um, success doesn't just happen, especially in this league. It's tough to go out and win every week. And if you let your f attention and, and focus slip, then uh, it's going to show. So um, our mindset, no matter what's going on, is to, uh, to come to work, ready to go, work to get better each and every day, prepare to win football games, you know, whether you're coming off a loss or, or a win. We've you developed a, a trust level with Chester Rogers since he's taken over in the slot. Can you talk about how that's developed <clears throat> over the course of camp up till now? Yeah, Chester's done a really good job for us. He's a guy who came in last year, saw him making plays um, against the defense, and then uh, during training camp, he just continued to improve the entire time. Um, made some big plays for us during training camp and, and built that trust. And uh, again, showed up on Sunday, tight, tight windows on third down, making tough catches, taking hits. And, uh, and converting big first downs for us. So uh, really confident throwing the ball to Chester. You've obviously been around Derek for a while at this point, but are you ever still maybe just in, in awe at what he's able um, to do on, on a regular basis? And you know, after a performance like that in Seattle, do you ever find yourself just kind of being amazed? No, I don't think there's any amazement. You know, I think 
he's proven what he could do, and he, and he goes out and does it. You know, I think that uh, it's awesome to see see what he can do, but there, I don't think there's any amazement. I think that, uh, like I said, he's shown what he can do. He's tough. He's physical. He is durable, um, and he makes big plays. So uh, excited to see him. You know, when you see him kind of round the corner and, and one-on-one -on -one with, with a DB, uh, that's when the uh, the blood starts pumping. You get excited, you knowing that he can he can make that guy miss, stiff arm, outrun him, you know, whatever it may be. Find a way to get around him and, and go for the long run. So uh, when that happened in the game, I turned around, off the handed off, set up, and, and saw him kind of round in the corner, gaining speed with with one defender coming in, and knew it could be a big one. What does it say about his, his consistency and his history when he's doing these things that only the, the Jim Brown and Barry Sanders have done, and, and it's not amazing just because he did it last week, you know. I think his durability, you know, you look at how many carries he's had, how many touches he's had over the past couple of years, and, you know, he comes into the building and it seems like he's unfazed, you know. He's not ever walking around slow or sore, you know. I just think he's he's built different, and um, that, able, that enables him, obviously, with his mindset and his work ethic and, and everything that goes into that, but it enables him to, to con continue to make plays on a, on a week-in, week-out basis. The work that he does during practice, catching the ball with Coach Dews, and then just uh, Sunday career high and catches. Uh, what was to that, and how much can that be something you can kind of like spin forward and, and get him more involved in the passing game? Yeah, he made some big plays for us. You know, it wasn't there was a couple screens in there, uh, which were awesome to hit, but uh, the other ones weren't really designed. You know, we we're trying to push the ball downfield. Uh, they were doing a good job of sinking underneath our uh, our concepts downfield. Um, try to take what the defense gave me, which was the checkdowns and. Uh, when you throw it to, uh, to a guy like Derek, and even Jeremy had some, some big ones where he took a hit and, and gained some extra yards. So uh, if they're going to sink out of there and give us you know, 10 plus yards of space underneath, then uh, we have to be able to get the balls to the backs and, and let them make plays. You've Ryan, taken more not... hits probably in the first two games than you wanted to. Are there things that going forward that you can do in terms of checks and audibles maybe to try and keep yourself out of harm's way a little more? Uh, kind of depends on, on the play. You know, I think. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into that, but yeah, we want to try to limit those hits as much as we can. We've seen you stand and deliver the ball in the dirty pocket, guys flying around you. Is that basically just your mindset when you're back there to just ignore the rush and know, hey, I'm probably going to get hit, but I got to deliver the football? Is that just part of the game being a quarterback in this league? Yeah, I think so. You know, obviously, you kind of want to feel it, right? You just don't want to blindly stand there and and uh, just continue to wait. But there's a lot of situations where you can see your receiver or the concept. Opening up, and you know you just need to stand in there for for a half second. You feel it coming in, and and know you're about to get hit, but um, you see what's about to happen downfield, so you can stand in there and, and let it rip. And then there's other times when well, it's not as clean downfield. You know you feel some space or or feel the pressure, then you have to to pick up and run. So a um, little bit of both, right? So it's uh sometimes you're going to stand in there, and sometimes you want to be able to move and, and get off the spot. And you're going to get the Colts early on twice here in the season, this first run up. And what do you see out of the defense from, from this team? I have a ton of respect for this, this team and this defense. You know, it's, it's a sound defense. And we have a ton of respect for the way they play us. They play us you know, a lot like we like to play physical, uh, finish. Uh, they're going after the ball. They have playmakers. Um, they're sound. You know, they're not giving up anything easy. You have to go out there and earn everything. So, uh, you know, it's a big mindset week for us of, of go out and execute. And, you know, we have to play our style of football, which is exactly what they're trying to do. So it's, it's going to be a battle of who can do it better. important to, to kind of sustain the momentum and, and kind of not give one back. You want to win every week, but you got a chance to kind of take a pretty good lead on a division foe, make this one even – bring even more heightened awareness to this one. Anytime you play a division opponent, you know, the stakes go up. So um, – and every time we play these guys, we know it's going to be a tough – uh, a tough game, and, and, and they're going to come to play. So, yeah, a big week for us to, to go out, accept the challenge, and, and play well. I have not worked much with, with Julio necessarily. Uh, did you find yourself during the game trusting his ability to make a play, just throwing it out there and seeing what he could do? Yeah, no doubt. You know, I, I mentioned that first one on the third down that, uh, you know, it was cover everything else was covered, and I was about to get sacked, so I needed to get the ball out and, and put a ball in a place where – you know, he could go make a play. He jumped, I don't know how high he jumped, probably nine feet high and, and uh, you know, made a play on the ball. So you see him make that, that play. It's a pure trust throw, trust play, and that confidence goes up. Uh, and uh, the one that got overturned in, in the red zone, again, you know, pockets closing in, 
uh, about to get hit, have to get it out earlier than anticipated, than what we'd repped, and put it up in a place where, where only he could get it. He goes up and gets it, and um, you know whether that was a blade of grass or not, that's still uh, up in the air. But uh, good to see him go make those plays, no doubt. You've been around a lot of good receivers, but how rare is his ability to do that? Well, it's special. Obviously, he's shown it for 10 plus years now, his ability to to make those those big time plays. You know, he has a, a great feel for the game. He's played a lot of football, so he understands what we're trying to do. Uh, then he has the uh, the physical ability to go do it. Improved as a, as a pass catcher and as a pass blocker in your in your time here. Hey, he's, he's working at it constantly. You know, you see him out here with Tony. He is uh, big for us in, in the blocking. You know, there was some safety pressures in this last game. We knew Jamal Adams was going to come, and Derek did a good job of stepping stepping up and uh, and taking care of him. That way, I could deliver the ball. We had some huge plays in the past game because Derek um, put a good block on on the safety underneath. So. Um, definitely a guy I have a lot of trust in, uh, in the in the pass protection game, and then obviously we saw what we could do once you get the ball in his hands uh, on checkdowns or screens or whatever it may be. Throw yeah, out vertical shot to him anywhere, you know. In the playbook. <laughs> I'm not going to give up our game plan, but uh, you know, it's good to see him make those plays, and, and the more plays he makes, the more confidence you get, no doubt. In your history, you've been more likely to get hurt in the pocket or on the move. Uh, I don't know. I try not to get hurt too much. <laughs> Born in Texas, I mean, were you a Oilers? Did you have any early memories of the Oilers? I guess it's the Oilers tribute week. Did you have any early memories of the Oilers uh, from your days growing up? Yeah, I can remember uh, remember Oilers games. Um, I was still pretty young, but um, you know, remember Eddie George, um, Warren Moon. You know, early, early in my life, uh, my dad was a Warren Moon fan, so um, remember that. And then, uh, obviously, right when they came here, you know, obviously the uh, the game against the Rams. So those are pretty early on in my life, but but definitely good memories.